All right, Coach Miller, um, you got Evansville on the road on Friday. You want to make an opening statement or you just want to take questions? Let's take questions. All right, fire away, guys. What about, what about Evansville then? What uh, problems do they present? Anytime you start a season, I think the, n the number one concern is you don't have film on your team uh, that you're playing from this season. So you have to be able to make game time adjustments uh, to their new schemes and how they're trying to attack your defenses, what they're trying to do defensively. And so there's a premium on in-game adjustments, timeout adjustments, and halftime adjustments when you don't know exactly uh, what, what's, uh, what's their system this year. They're newcomers, the Evansville has an ACC transfer eligible, a junior college All-American, and a very talented freshman class um, to infuse into their returners. So uh, we just have to be ready to make game time adjustments is one of the major concerns. And uh, a lot of respect for their program, despite them coming off a disappointing year record-wise. Uh, they, they're impressive to watch on film with some of the things that they do. And now, with this year's roster much deeper and more talented, uh, it, it's a scary opening game for us. You have the seniors on this team, as far as those adjustments are concerned. Do they make some of those on their own, or are they enough experience, smart enough to do that? Absolutely. And you, you, you saw it against Finley. Um, we obviously uh, practiced day in and day out, but we also had a close scrimmage with Dayton. And, and you see upperclassmen being able to make adjustments on the fly, or maybe even things we don't have in the playbook yet, the upperclassmen will look at you and say, well, coach, you like to do that last year when a team did this to you. And so they're thinking like your coaching staff and the, the way you hope upperclassmen do. So strategy-wise, they're, they're trying to understand uh, the chess match. This team's doing that, so what should we do to counter it? And uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure to have upperclassmen to do that. And with six seniors this year, it gives us the luxury but there's lineups we'll have on the floor that won't be able to do that uh, is easy. So. Speaking of lineups, I was told on Saturday you had seven starters. I was just wondering how the NCAA was going to let you <laughs> work with that. Or You know, I, I've talked to, uh, at, during the Finley game, we decided to go in the off-guard position with Chrissy Steffen, but talked to both Chrissy Steffen uh, and Daniel Havel and also Jess Slagle before the game because I felt all seven of them uh, could earn or be considered starters, and I wanted them to know that's what I thought of them and was really comfortable with those top seven players. And so it doesn't matter who starts in the backcourt alongside of Tracy Pontius and Lauren Prohaska. We believe we're deep in those positions, and, and they're all going to get their opportunities. And the starter might not be the one in the game at crunch time, and uh, you know the other one might be the star of the game. but. Uh, all uh, those two that don't start are going to be very, very important to us, and and I think it shows the depth that we have at some at some of the positions. So Stefan, you say will be with Hennigan, Prohaska, Pontius, and Yule. That's the position that's always that, that's, that's the, the that's the flexible yeah. position, yeah. but very comfortable with Tracy Pontius and Prohaska in the lineup, and yeah. certainly our senior front court with Jen Yule and Maggie Hennigan have separated themselves a little bit. Uh, to earn the starting position, but uh, one of the luxuries of this team uh, hopefully would be our depth and as we continue to improve and get better. But like I said, we went and looked back at the Finley scrimmage last year and people that were in the rotation during the exhibition time of the year weren't necessarily the players that ended up in the rotation at the end of the year. And if that happens again, that's a great problem to have because obviously the players continue to improve throughout the year. Kurt, would you, as a kind of an overview of your team, what do you see as the strengths of this team? What are your biggest concerns? Clearly, I think the strength of the team is we have, uh, on certain nights, the ability to make a lot of shots. And uh, we have talented three-point shooters. Uh, we have a core group that's good finishers around the basket. So there's nights when uh, we look like a pretty basketball team because a lot of shots will go in. It's the nights that that doesn't happen, that I'm concerned on when we don't make a lot of shots or we're struggling percentage-wise from the field, can we generate enough offense from our defense, from offensive rebounding? Uh, can we create offense in a different way? Or is our defense 
good enough to win games on those nights. And, and so that's a concern. I, I, I've talked um, till I'm blue in the face with this team during the preseason on how tough we are going to be. And toughness is defined in, in, in a lot of different areas and not just what you would assume in the weight room or how much they can bench or how many sit-ups they can do, how many push-ups they can do. It's not that. It's uh, the little things of the game. Are we willing to take charges? Are we willing to get on the floor for loose balls? Um, and are we going to be a good rebounding team? And so I, I think the biggest question mark in my mind is can we and will we find ways to win when we don't shoot the ball well? You don't seem to be as concerned this year with rebounding as you had been in the past. This, this will be a better rebounding team. But. Well, I continue to think we have good length uh, from the guards this year and between Stefan and Prohaska, um, Daniel Havel, even Jess Slagle, that we can infuse guard rebounding with our post. And uh, But there's always a concern when you lose a center that has anchored the position for three straight years that she didn't have, uh, Tara Breski, I'm speaking of, didn't have great rebounding numbers, but n neither did her opponent. And uh, she kept the other opposing center off the boards night in and night out. So rebounding is still a concern. We play very uh, spread out on offense, and sometimes uh, we don't make as much of an effort to the offensive glass as we need to, and we keep striving to get better at that and keep emphasizing that. But... So rebounding issues are never going to go away, but I do like the ability to put uh, a long and lanky team in multiple positions on the floor. You've seen, obviously, where you guys got voted in the MAC, knowing that you have six seniors returning player of the year. Will you talk about managing the expectations that this team enters the season with? But, you know, we, we really don't talk about all the predictions and all, all the um, polls and, and places that have picked us to have a successful season. There's no one that can put more expectations than we put on ourselves in the locker room. But we're working one day at a time, one game at a time to get better. And ultimately, we think wins and losses take care of themselves if you keep trying to get better daily. Uh, a challenge for this senior group is, is that as talented as they are on the floor, they've always deferred the leadership and vocal uh, part of the game to upperclassmen before them. Uh, this is a new challenge for this senior class, despite their talent level, is they're not by nature a vocal leading group. Um, Lauren is very quiet. Tracy is better than she's ever been, but is um, a quiet leader. Um, so where are we going to get the, uh, that vocal leadership from in this senior class? Or does it come from an underclassman? And who's going to hold the team accountable, with the exception of the coaching staff, when things don't go well or we have some adversity? Um, that is the, the non-X and O challenge that we have, is we're veteran, but this group has never had to be leaders before, and that's a new and challenge, uh, a challenging aspect for this year's team. Uh, along the same lines, obviously Lauren, being two-time player of the year, comes into this season with expectations. Will you talk a little bit about her managing the expectations? Like, what do you do for an encore? Yeah, yeah no, she just is so even keel that she's got a great attitude going into the season and is not going to put any added pressure on. If she averages the lowest point total in her career this season, but we win a MAC championship, I think she would be more than happy and uh, genuinely excited for the team's success before any individual success. We realize that she's going to be uh, the start of every scouting report uh, on us, that you know she's got to be the focal point. And uh, we got to keep other team, uh, other teammates involved. And the more balanced we are, we believe uh, we're more successful. But that there's no doubt we keep trying to be creative on ways to put the ball in Lauren's hands and get her opportunities to um, be productive. Because I think the biggest compliment to her is she's such an efficient player. She hasn't had to have the amount of touches that some superstars do to get their numbers. She can do that uh, very efficiently, night in and night out. Are you saying, Kurt, then, that you're looking for ways to find her more touches then? 
because of her efficiency, or is it it's never really been necessary to do that? I'm I kind of lost it at the end. And a little of both. Um, we need the balance, and she understands that we're better when we have good balance. But as a coach, uh, understanding how talented she is, uh, I can't just settle for ways in the past that we've got her the ball or ways that she scored. I think I have got to continue to be creative and find new and other ways for her to be an option offensively that we maybe not shown our opponents in the past. Um, and we're looking at a completely um, different type of offense to add as we get closer to conference play um, to just keep teams off balance and that if you take this type of system away and Lauren's not being successful that we have something uh, to lean back on to still put her in position uh, to, to be efficient and have productivity.